Hi everybody, Dave here. Uh, I wanted to take a minute as part of the campaign to sort of give you a better idea of just uh, where your money's going, right? And what you're contributing to. You've all been really generous uh, and I hope that'll continue. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd show you some of the original art that uh, Noel, Noel Tuzan, uh, the artist on Volume 1 and the returning uh, illustrator on Volume 2, what he's been doing and what he works with. Now, he was kind enough to send me three pages from the uh, original volumes of Kismet, and I wanted to share them with you. So first, this is uh, probably my favorite scene. I'll pull back just a little bit. This is probably uh, my uh, one of my favorite scenes from the original series because it's the most super heroic moment that I permit uh, to kind of show up uh, in the book. That is to say, um, the story is really not about Kismet being a superhero. It's him having been a superhero. What do you do next? But he's still in the habit, He even... Uh, as he emerges into the 21st century. So as you can see, he, he busts in the door, uh, yelling out, you know, get down, or yelling out LaRue Lamont's name. She's armed, she has a audience kinda, kinda hostage. He's confronting her, and I want you to see how um, not only is uh, Noel first doing pencil and then doing pen over it, he's also doing gray washes that um, I think uh, are useful to our colorist, uh, to Rob Cronenborgs, because uh, he can really work in that space and also get a sense of how maybe uh, Noel wanted things hued. But then we have Kismet rushing at uh, LaRue. She fires, he has lightning quick reflexes because he has his four sense, right? Um, that I use very sparingly. In fact, um, I think of the Vertigo comic series Preacher and how they only had him use his powers uh, infrequently. So I try to do the same with Kismet. You don't see him flashing his powers all the time, but you do see it in action. Uh, there's space left in the panels uh, for them to have a little bit of superhero banter which you almost have to have by necessity, but I kept that to a minimum also. Uh, there's only so much time in comics to actually speak. You can't have a whole dialogue as you're running at someone, and that's sort of a conceit that superhero comics tend to uh, flaunt, uh, but here I tried to keep it under control. I really liked the idea of him using the... Um, what we have behind them is a curtain, a stage curtain, and him using it to pivot and uh, disarm her. Don't love that a woman is being kicked by a man, but I also, th those were the characters we put in play. I didn't feel I could avoid that. Violence was kept to a minimum. Um, and you see, he's going to disarm her. He's not going to thrash her. Um, this is a really great sequence. It shows uh, Noel's uh, background as a animation storyboard artist. You really get the play-by-play -play very nicely. I love the perspective, the angles, basically us running up behind Kismet in these two shots even after he has busted in. And we don't do a total 180 from right here to right here. We have this interstitial, uh, sorry, this... Um, panel that's been sort of inserted in so that we can reconfigure. It's a really great sequence. I really enjoy it. And it shows you, I hope, what's going into one page alone. Uh, why we're doing this page by page, because there's so much uh, art, there's so much thought uh, by the art team going into this page. And this is even without colors and letters, which take on... Um, an art of their own, which take on a life of their own. <clears throat> Two more uh, pages. This is another one of my favorite sequences. Noel sent me uh, my favorite three. Um, because this one, totally not a superhero moment, not even about kismet. It's about Dina coming home from work as a Boston EMT. And 
uh, I took reference photos so that Noel, who lives in Canada, could specifically um, set it in a real Boston. Uh, and so we have Ruggles Station here, the Northeastern University campus. Ruggles Station, her in the station, then aboard uh, the T and then crossing uh, the river on either the orange or the red lines. Um, there is a lot of extra space left for what is a caption heavy sequence, which is a very internal sequence of the narrator commenting on uh, Dina's history and her engagement with Boston, her love of Boston. We also left room here for uh, a news readout uh, of the day. So when Taylor Esposito, the letterer, goes in, he's using this space in a totally different font, in a totally different way, uh, to communicate not only where we are, but when we are, what news uh, is unfolding. And finally, this last, this last uh, unbordered uh, panel, this panelless panel, uh, just a gorgeous, gorgeous, um, stark uh, but also rich um, uh, scene of Boston, of going from Boston into Cambridge. Um, I love it. It could almost stand alone. It could almost be its own framed uh, piece. But you get uh, a bit of her body language. She strides pretty confidently. Uh, she's not taking up an undue amount of space, but at the same time, um, isn't shirking away from anyone. And I have to tell you, during now, during the pandemic, during the coronavirus, it's a reminder of just how intermingled and how dense we all were at one time, and, and, and maybe we'll return to again. But I love this sequence, too. Let me show you one more. Thank you for bearing with me. I hope this is <laughs> illustrating. Um, what I intended it to, which is showing you what you're contributing to, what's how the real art is being made here. I write it, but then it takes on an incredible life of its own with my art team. They are my colleagues, they're my collaborators, um, and, and they deserve support, right? Okay, one more sequence, different than the other two, because this is very much a dialogue heavy sequence. It's very character driven. Noel still keeps it uh, fresh. He varies the angles without, you know, jumping around uh, too much. But this is Dina and Rabia making it clear to Kismet, a Muslim superhero from the 40s, that they're gay. They're, they're a couple. They're, they're a lesbian couple. Um, he may have had... I don't even want to say suspicions, but he might have known this. They weren't clear. It was unspoken, and it shouldn't have been left unspoken. They wanted to be explicit uh, about who they are, who they love, because they love him too. And so I think that's being communicated in the body language and the postures. Kismet here is starting off not knowing what the conversation even is. So you sort of see him... Uh, pose, not not braced as much as in a neutral position uh, while the two women uh, stand uh, next to each other. I love, just to show Rabia and Dina together here, um, I love their variety in body types, right? We had to keep Kismet, you know, relatively hunky and masculine the way he was depicted in the 40s comics. I didn't want to deviate from that too much, but we have uh, body types and uh, different even levels of ability um, in terms of handicaps or in terms of um, uh, limited abilities all throughout the series. And here in this panel, you can see him listening. He's being respectful, hands back. You can see the taller, larger Rabia seating the floor to her girlfriend, uh, Dina, whose stature really has nothing to do with her, her confidence or her identity. She may be on the shorter, slimmer side, but she is just as fierce as anyone in the room. And then you have this lovely uh, moment of them, you know, coming together. I mean, 
um, him gently touching their shoulders, not in any untoward way, but communicating that uh, he loves them. He sees them as whole people. He loves who and what they are and, and loves that they love each other. Um, and then we get a group hug. Uh, finally, we sort of let the page breathe at the bottom, open up the panels out of all this sort of tense sequence in the middle um, with uh, blocked in panels. We finally let the it breathe. They go into all relaxed body positions. They have a laugh and a joke uh, together, and they can be as close as they want to be. They don't. They were never lying. They were never um, acting as anything other than they were. Two women in love, but they were definitely using sort of more a workplace distancing, right? Because this takes place at meta assistance at the workplace and now um they're free um and kismet is part of their life now fully love this sequence you get the action sequence you get the uh very character driven sequence with justina alone and then finally this set of dialogue between the three of them being characters interacting I hope you enjoyed that walk through just those three pages from uh, Kismet Man of Fate, Volume 1, Boston Strong. I hope you'll consider supporting uh, for even a, even just a tiny fraction, even for the cost of just one comic book a month. I hope you'll consider supporting uh, Volume 2 through the Patreon campaign. And perhaps we'll do more videos like this if uh, if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for your time.